Randy Quarles, then Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation Chair Yelena McWilliams, and finally National Credit Union Administration Chairman Mark McWaters. Mr. Rodding, please begin. Thank you. I, I do appreciate choosing the order uh, based upon view, uh, beauty versus tenure and experience. <laughs> Um, Chairman Crapo, Ranking Member Brown, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to discuss implementation of the Economic Growth Act, uh, regulatory relief, and consumer protection. Um, I am honored to be here with my regulatory colleagues to update you on our progress implementing the Economic Growth Act. Over the last 10 months that I have served as Comptroller, a strong working relationship has developed amongst regulatory agencies based upon open and frequent dialogue and valuing each other's opinions and viewpoint. I want to begin by congratulating the chairman and the committee on passing bipartisan common sense reforms that ease the unnecessary regulatory burden on small and mid-sized banks across the country. By lifting that burden, we help small banks survive to be vital parts of their communities, serve their customers, and promote economic growth. The reforms included in the law are an important step towards rationalizing our regulatory framework while ensuring our financial system continues to operate in a safe and sound manner, provides fair access to financial services, and treats customers fairly. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency recognizes the importance of this effort and is committed to implementing the law as quickly as possible. We have dedicated the necessary resources to accomplish this task in a prompt and efficient manner. The Act authorizes the OCC to issue one regulation on its own and to jointly issue 10 others with fellow safety and soundness regulators. Separately, we will consult with the Bureau of Consumer fin Financial Protection on a variety of consumer protection requirements included in the Act. The one regulation that tasks individually to the OCC affords federal savings associations greater flexibility without the burden and cost of changing charters. The OCC has advocated for greater flexibility for federal savings associations since becoming their primary regulator on July 2011. I, can, I commend Senators Moran and Heitkamp for taking the lead on this issue. On September 10th, the agency published a notice of proposed rulemaking to implement this provision and allow federal associations with 20 billion or less in assets on December 31st, 2017 to, act, to elect to operate with national banking powers. Federal savings associations that make this election generally would have the rights and privileges as a national bank and be subject to the same duties, restrictions, penalties, liabilities, and limitations. Comments on the proposed rule are due in November. Following a review of the comments, I expect to issue a final rule in January of 2019. In August, the OCC joined the Federal Reserve and FDIC to issue two interim rules. On August 22nd, the agency issued an interim rule amending the agency's liquidity rules to treat certain municipal securities as high-quality liquid assets. The next day, the agencies issued final rules to expand the number of community banks eligible for an 18-month examination cycle to affect changes sponsored by Senator Heller and Donnelly. The rule allows qualifying entities with less than $3 billion in total assets to benefit from an extended examination cycle, greatly reducing their regulatory burden. Most recently, on September 18th, the agencies published a notice of proposed rulemaking to revise the definition of high volatility commercial real estate, or HVCRE, subject to the heightened capital requirements as supported by Senators Cotton and Jones. Work on the remaining interagency regulatory is well underway, and we will issue notice of proposed rulemakings to simplify capital requirements applicable to eligible community banks and reduce all call requirements later this fall. While we work expeditiously to complete these regulations, the OCC joined the Federal Reserve and the FDIC in July to issue a statement clarifying that the agency's intent to supervise institutions consistent with the intent of the law. In doing so, the agencies will, among other things, not enforce requirements on banks that the Economic Growth Act intends to eliminate, including with respect to the amendments to the stress test requirements imposed by the Dodd-Frank and exempting institutions with of less than $10 billion from the Volcker Roll. I appreciate the opportunity to update the committee on the implementation of the economic growth and progress the OCC has made in other areas to reduce unnecessary burden and promote economic opportunity and job growth. That additional work includes encourage banks to re-enter the small dollar lending market, issuing an advance notice of public rulemaking to begin public dialogue 
regarding modernizing the uh, Community Reinvestment Act regulations and moving forward on accepting special purpose national charters for fintechs engaged in the business of banking and making compliance with the Bank Security Act and anti-money laundering regulations more efficient and efficient. My written testimony provides additional details on, the, on these efforts. I believe that consumers and communities alike will benefit from the reforms included in the Economic Act and the agency's other work for many years to come. The OCC will keep the committee apprised of our work, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rodding. Mr. Quarles. Uh, thank you. 